time to uh, get this thing laid up. Now, it's been probably three hours, uh, so I'm just going to test the uh, tack. So I'm able, it's still tacky, but it's not picking up on my finger. So now it's uh, good and ready to uh, start uh, the layup. So what I'm gonna do is just very gently coat the uh, tool coat. All right, so I've cut Tiny, tiny pieces of uh, three quarter ounce. I'm gonna just basically blend this first layer in, being extremely careful, because this is where voids can happen and we don't want voids. So I'm just pushing it in, getting it on. Uh, where am I? I'm trying to get it sort of diagonally in there, in a way. So it will fold in better. This three quarter ounce pretty much goes on uh, real nice. Very, very rarely do I have a problem with this. So the biggest thing is you can't really see that well where this is on the mold. So I'm just going to basically uh, overlap, even though I can't really see that well where it's been. It's a bit of a guessing game. But right now, I think the uh, tool coat is perfectly cured to where I need to do this. So this is uh, a lot of bends on this thing, so it's going to be a little sort of tricky. We'll get it done. So I'm wrapping it up on the valve a little bit. And then I'm trying to just stretch it and spread it. Without blocking the camera view, which I tend to do. All right, so uh, I've put the three quarter ounce cloth on. Uh, I don't know what it's called in metric, but that's, I live in the US, so I'm just using the, what I'm kind of used to now. Um, what I've done, though, is around the valve stem, I've put about three more layers just draping around the valve stem, just in case I have any kind of issues um, and miss something. It's so easy to sometimes to miss uh, where you've laid up and not. But anyhow. Um, so now I'm, I've moved over to the uh, two ounce cloth. This could be three ounce if you wanted to, it's no big deal. And what I'm doing, I'm starting from the base this time, because I want to make sure I get tucked in to a uh, parting plane slash cutting plane. And uh, it's really a shoulder, I guess. So I just want to first start down here and make sure I get a real good seam between the part and the uh, mounting base here. So, uh, as you may notice, you're probably going to be getting some ads on your video, on my videos now. Uh, it's because I finally, thanks to all you lot, got monetized. Unfortunately, because I get very few views i.e. about an average of about four or five hundred uh, per video. Uh, and then people only watch the videos for about an average of two to three minutes. Um, I'll give you an example. In the last week where I've been monetized, I've made, uh, I think, four dollars. <laughs> Anyhow, let me get some more cloth. So uh, we'll continue with the uh, two ounce. Oh, it's three ounce. I'm not sure what I've got here. But uh, going on about this monetization thing, um, what you know, one of the reasons, the main reason why we do this channel is to try and teach, you know, new people or people coming into the hobby who uh, you know want to expand themselves. And there's tons of people who have ability to. Uh, do these kinds of molds and things, but sometimes they're very scared or don't 
simply know how to do it. So, you know, my goal is to try and uh, bring a little uh, from experience and uh, learn how I do things, not necessarily the perfect right way, but it works for me and it has done for 12 or so years. But it's also, uh, we want to try and make a, a couple of bucks at least to try and fund these uh, ventures. And I'll give you an example. The Super Tucano that was, you know, uh, finished up about, I don't know, six months ago. We figured it out, and that thing cost us around $4,000 to develop. Probably uh, more closer to $5,000. Um, the material cost, the uh, machines we had to buy, and so on and so forth to be able to produce some of the parts, uh, you know, get very expensive. And the resin we use and the cloth, the materials, enormously expensive. Uh, when you're doing it the way we're doing it, you know, there is a cheaper way of doing it, but we kind of make professional molds and uh, can reproduce all the parts, etc. no problem. So, uh, you know, if you guys can watch the videos a little longer, and even if you go into the playlist and just select something and say, play all, that would help us out tremendously. Uh, I think we're making right now, it looks to be about 75 cents a day. <laughs> so it's not going to pay for the next venture, that's for sure. All right, so um, I've gone around the pyramid with the two ounce. Now I want to build the top out. So what I've done is uh, I've made a whole bunch of little uh, squares, like about, whoa, like about this size. And that's because from experience, I know that if I try and put the two ounce on in one shot in uh, this area where it's real bad, uh, it's not gonna happen. It's gonna just lift and separate and do all kinds of things. So I'm just going to be patient and put these little squares on which are more manageable and I'll build it up with that first and then we can start looking at putting bigger pieces on. So my experience uh, says that you've got to be patient and take the time, whatever it happens to be, to uh, do this properly. Uh, a lot of people are just so impatient these days and you know that's I can tell that by just the uh, people who jump through the videos and never uh, watch the full videos and I don't know why they do that because you know what you're just going to miss out on all the tips and tricks and techniques that we use to do this so you know if you're one of those people I suggest you don't even bother watching the videos because you're not learning from them you just seen a couple of highlights, you get bored, start jumping around. Um, so, you know, there's no point in me doing these videos if people are not going to watch them. But it's funny, you know, if a dog pees on a cat or something, they get 10 million views. And uh, I don't know what's going on in the world. It's just crazy. But we're not going to do dog peeing on cat videos. We're just going to bang along doing our silly little toy airplanes and uh, hope for the best. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to raise some money for the next project because I don't want to put another $4,000 in it. Well, I put about half of that. Brad puts the other half in. Uh, and we, we just find it's too expensive. And there's really no payback. So it's kind of like because we only make generally one... I mean, uh, two models of any particular design we do, unless we break one, of course, then, you know, it's basically a $2,000 model. Now, they are fully scale, of course, and they're contest capable. Uh, that's for sure, because I've won a bunch of contests with them. Uh, it's just expensive, so we need to figure out a way of generating some funds via this YouTube stuff or something else. Uh, so if you've got any suggestions, 
uh, we'd really appreciate it. So we're looking at the next model to uh, be a single engined EDF because we're you know we're always doing these twins and the parts are just horrendous. Uh, so what we're thinking of doing is a super scale T33. I think it's what a Thunderbird. Um, anyhow, uh, it's the one with the big uh, pod tanks or uh, tip tanks, I should say, uh, on on the tips of the wings. Um, I used to have one years and years ago, about eight years ago, and it was probably one of the best flying planes I have ever flown, and I've flown some nice planes, but I just absolutely loved that plane. You could put it into a knife edge, and it would stay there all day long, and uh, had lots of vertical performance on a single 19mm uh, jet fan, and I just loved that plane. So I was going to do uh, an F-15 EX or an SU-27 flanker or something like that, maybe even a, a RAF tornado. But we looked at the cost, and again, I'm, and I'm, I know I'm bitching on about the cost a bit, but it's just, we, we don't want to put another $5,000 into the next uh, project because we don't get it back. We don't get anywhere near it back. I'll give you an example. Uh, I finally became an Amazon affiliate, and you can see some of the links, obviously, in the uh, description. And in, let's see, we did that during the Tucano phase, and uh, all we've made to date, I think, is about $9, which we've never been paid for, because there's always a, a minimum uh, I think YouTube is like a hundred bucks minimum and, and I'm sure Amazon is the same. So, you know, I don't know whether it's worth even putting the information in the description. It's just more work when we're doing the videos because there's no payback in it. Nobody seems to be interested in buying them and, and that's all fine. Um, you know, we don't do this, like I say, for the money, but it'd be nice if we could actually make some to go towards the uh, models. And maybe, you know, if the channel grows, which it is doing, it's very, very slow, but if the channel grows and we actually start making, you know, I don't know, 100 bucks a week or something like that, um, that would be great because that would pay a lot of the expenses for these uh, resins and things. All right, so <clears throat> I've now increased the uh, resin amount I'm using. It's getting really hot in the uh, shop. It's uh, uh, closing on 94 degrees or thereabouts. I'm sweating like crazy. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to work my magic on these hard parts, which is the top here. So what I've done is I've taken basically a more of an open weave uh, cloth, which I'm just going to start basically molding in and building up. This is a little more flexible than the, the clothes weave stuff uh, that I'm going to be using in, in, on the sides and stuff. Uh, and the reason being that... Uh, it, it costs a little less and we got a deal where we was able to get you know like I don't know a hundred yards of it or something for a few hundred dollars so uh, that's what we're going to start putting on now but it's not liking these curves hmm okay let's uh, try the other stuff see if that works a little better Maybe it needs smaller pieces. Hmm. Seems to form a little better. So I think we'll maybe uh, stick with this one. Okay, guys, this is the uh, mold finished. Uh, it's not the prettiest mold I've ever done. I just use scrap uh, materials from my scrap bin. Don't want to waste any. It's just a tiny little one-time use mold. Anyhow, uh, the Schrader valve is in, 
this is all reinforced around here so hopefully it doesn't blow out when we uh, put pressure to it anyhow there you go uh, this is going to be done and uh, a couple of days i'll let it cure and then we'll try and pop the part out